Off rip, I do not like Hanako Montgomery's style of reporting, but I feel that that doesn't really matter anyway because she doesn't seem like the kind of person that I would vibe with. I'm alright with that. Her reporting is everything that I hate about modern day journalism. A couple of days ago, Vice News put out a video on their channel called Inside the Pedophilic Manga Industry in Japan. Now, Vice is known for their gonzo style of journalism, but that title really threw me off. It's one of the most aggressive titles that I've seen from a major news reporter for a YouTube video, but whatever, it's their style, it's what they do. However, they seem to have it out for Japan. One of the most popular videos on Vice News is Japanese schoolgirls for sale or something like that which, you know, that's a bit of a stretch. Even earlier this year, they had a video about Japan's hostage situation, which, it, that, that's a real thing. Japan's justice system fucking sucks. So there's definitely uh, a, a need for a lot more attention to come to that. But I don't know, I, I just feel like they're trying to do everything they can to destroy Japan's society and their values. And I mean, like, if that's what you want to do, fine, that's cool. But what upset me about this video was the blanket statements and bad faith actors that made up a large amount of the expose. Vice truly is parasitic. They purposefully frame all of their questions and their exposés to get a reaction out of the viewer instead of letting you know what you should know about the story itself. Early on, there's a scene with this guy named Shinji. He admits to liking Lolly. During his time with Hanako, she asks him if he thinks what he's doing is right or wrong, if he's into that sort of stuff in real life, his contributions to that field when he was asked by a magazine to create content like that, and then she ultimately asks him if his family approves of what he does. Now obviously, there's a lot of editing done, which is fine, I understand the conversation is the conversation, but it's just strange how she frames everything to come back to manga, not understanding that this Shinji guy is indulgent. He's in a very small niche, and I can tell that's her entire point of this video. Her agenda is to make it seem like manga at large is the problem. In the beginning of the video, they use footage of Naruto Road to Ninja Warrior or whatever that movie was. I, I, I don't understand why you would do that. Naruto has absolutely nothing to do with the people or the type of manga that you're talking about in this video. Hanako later talks to the director of a child protective organization, and I like getting her opinion as well, but again, everything that she uses in her interview with this director is framed around, is manga the problem? Is manga the reason why there are predators now growing in Japan? It, it's manga, right? It's manga. It has to be manga. Every single thing keeps coming back to manga, and it's never about what kind of behavior in the communities is letting this be okay? Why are lawmakers unable to pass full laws against Lolly and Shota? At no point does she ever bring any of this up. But then any credibility that Hanako had is immediately thrown out of the window when she infiltrates a store that sells this stuff and she is undercover and sneakily recording it. It's so stupid because she asked the store owner, off camera mind you, if she can record the contents of the store. The guy rightfully says no, but then her and her cameraman just sneak back in with the camera dangling from his neck and they're recording the contents of the store anyway. They, they blur everything out, they blur the people's faces, but if you were going to record the store no matter what, why even bother asking the person to begin with? And when he says no, which is within his right, why wouldn't you go to someone else and then ask them, because apparently there are many of these stores, as Hanako said, why don't you ask that next store owner, hey, could we possibly interview you and record the contents of your store if you're proud of what you sell? That is what a proper journalist would do. If you're going to sneak in anyway, why frame the question as if the store owner is ashamed of what he's selling. He just doesn't want to bring any attention to his store for something that's already uncomfortable for many people. So I don't understand what Hanako's goal is. What is the expose? Who is she trying to catch? What attention is she trying to bring to the viewer? There's nothing here for us. Her lack of differentiation between doujin and manga that's mainstream is already bothering me, but she never actually goes to the mainstream. Afterwards, she speaks with a convicted abuser. This guy is super creepy, by the way, but just hearing him speak and the way Hanako tries to bring it again back to manga as if the cause of his problems is manga. The guy says, yeah, manga contributed to it, but I was always into these thoughts. I always had weird thoughts as a kid. The, the dude even turned himself in at a later point in time and he says he's open about his crimes because he doesn't want anyone to get involved with this. You know, okay, that's whatever. I don't care. What I'm so bothered by is that 
you're making it about manga. I, I just don't understand. You keep bringing in all these people and none of them really ever bring up the fact that manga is what corrupted them. You're the one who just keeps trying to make it about manga. I will give it to Hanako. She does have an assortment of people that she brings on for this, this expose, but I, I just wonder, why didn't you talk to normies? I would have loved to have gotten the opinion of someone who really isn't into manga, but maybe they have a friend or a brother who consumes this sort of content, or maybe they create that sort of content. Like, you don't talk to the families. You don't talk to anyone who's been impacted by this. You talk with the guy who basically got away with a slap on the wrist, another person who isn't that well known for his contributions towards Loli and Shota. Minoru Ojino is interviewed towards the end. He's a politician and a small time doujin mangaka. And while I appreciate Vice offering a fair gray area counterpoint, Everything Ojino-san contributes still tips the discussion in Hanako's favor. It would have been awesome to speak with uh, the mangaka of Love Hina, for example, who's a sitting councilman right now, I believe. And he also believes that manga shouldn't be censored. He has very strong opinions of where manga should be today and how it sits in Japanese society. It would have been awesome if you had gotten to speak with him or anyone else who's made the transition of working in the manga industry and then moving into a more mainstream stream style of work but when you keep on bringing it to the trenches when you keep on talking about such a niche field and you don't differentiate it between manga and doujin then it just kind of leads anyone who doesn't have as much knowledge about japanese culture and manga and anime they're going to conflate it as all one thing and you kind of see that sort of like jumbledness in the expose. There's so little content here and it makes me feel like Hanako just went through her b-roll with her camera dude at the end of the month because they needed to get something out and they said, oh, okay, well, we have enough to do an expose on Pedo manga. And it's crazy because on her IG story, she says that it took months of reporting to get to where we are today. And I, I, I don't know, months of reporting? Are you sure? Maybe a couple weekends? So I don't know. I don't know what Hanako Montgomery's agenda was with this expose. I, I hope she got whatever she was looking for because I feel more confused about the topic than before I watched. And, uh, you know, the fact that Vice turned off the comments on this video, like, almost immediately, if not immediately, is telling. They knew they had a controversial piece that people would rightfully slice into, and their lack of confidence in having that open form of communication just shows that, yeah, we needed content, we're just gonna push this out. I is this what Vice has become? Vice used to be the only remaining leader in gonzo journalism, and even though it became more corporate over the last few years this hurts to see if you're not even like double checking what your reporters are sending in did anyone look at this video and think hey where is the journalistic integrity here this video feels like something any second year centennial college student could have put together over the weekend so long as they had the footage for it i don't know i'm not really stressed about the whole manga topic so much it just bothers me that you have a journalist that would try and pick on manga not knowing anything about manga using blanket statements to try and discredit manga when all they had to do was just spend a little bit of time researching and actually being a journalist and they would have came up with a stronger story that would have cast a light on the issues in Japan involving Loli and Shota which I do agree need to be addressed but this this wasn't it this was really fucking tacky